Thank you, thank you. Good afternoon. You all look good. Do you look good? Do you think you look good? I think you look awesome. Well, you know, first of all, I want to thank all the people that came across the stage earlier. And I also want to thank all the volunteers for your dedication to create this platform for all of us. So can we give a big round of applause for all the volunteers here today? Thank you very much. We started this event from this morning in a Chinese session. And this afternoon's English session. And I kept sitting back there and I kept thinking, what can I do that can help make a difference? perhaps in your life? And what can I do? What kind of things that I could share that perhaps will allow us to remove that tinted lens that, that Mark talked about, Samson talked about? Because I, I believe this platform can change everyone's life. And this business, everyone can do this business. But it's interesting and ironic that not everyone will succeed in this business. And not everyone will make money. Now, why is that? So sometimes in life, and I, I think Sam did a fabulous job capturing what it takes to, to jumpstart your business. But sometimes what it takes is that, that, that disruptive things in our lives that really make us see something. And so having said all that, I want to explain to you and share with you where I was and why I think that if you knew what it is to receive, is that fair enough? So with that, I'm going to show you a gesture. Now, look, look at this. Some of you might not know what it is. And for those of you that know what it is, this is a designer case of sunglasses, a pair of sunglasses. And I love this brand because it has no logo on it. Unlike those logos you carry on the big H or the big LV or the big C's. And this particular brand, it says your only, your initial is good enough. You don't need anyone's initial. But anyway, I wish they paid me a commission for saying that. What was that, Mark? What was that, that, that thingy, that, that, sol that solar panel thingy? They got to hook us up, you know. Amazing. Now, I hope that by this gesture that you will get it. 20 some more years ago, before I got laid off in corporate America, I would not, if someone were to tell me about this platform or this opportunity, I perhaps would take no interest into it whatsoever. Because I didn't associate or identify that is for me. Why is that? Because most of us, and this is not my pair of sunglasses, and I hope, this, I hope that it looks fabulous on me, okay? This is also uh, Yvonne's sunglasses. Now, cool, right? Better be for a couple of hundred bucks a pair, okay? Now, 20 some more years ago, I was walking around life with a Tinder Shea on. Tinder Shea in not realizing of my current circumstances, not realizing, not aware, not awakened to where I was in life. At the same time, therefore, anything that come my way, I will view it through a tender shade. Whatever the tender shades were, it, perhaps it was conditioning by society, by educational system, by our parents, by whatever that might be, that forms a tender shade. And today, if you're able to remove that tender shade, to be honest and authentic with ourselves, of where we are today in life and be aware of what's happening around us. I just read a pretty alarming statistic recently. It says 85% of college graduates recently are moving back home with their parents. 54% of them couldn't find a job. And of the 27% of those people that found a job, their annual salary is 25000 a year. If you were, to take to, you were to take all the student loans in America, add it all together, it surpassed all the credit card debt in the nation. 
That's pretty alarming statistics. I'm a big believer of education. I think it's a building block. It helps us discipline and learn things about life. But it doesn't necessarily take us ultimately of where we want to go in life. I got a college degree. I went to UC Irvine. I went to UCLA to do some postgraduate studies. And I worked for a big, big Fortune 500 companies. And after working for corporate America more than 10 years, I got downsized. I was laid off. And sometimes in life, it took someone to lay me off, something kind of disruptive to force me to take off my tinder shade and say, you know what? Where was I in life? What was I doing? And many times, and I believe many people are on this thing, what I call the treadmill of life. You know, the tre how many of you know what a treadmill is? We all know what a treadmill is. A treadmill is something you go on. And to me, let me describe to you my treadmill life. 20 some more years ago, I used to work for Northrop Grumman, aerospace company. I worked for the he corporate headquarters in Century City. At that time, I lived nearby here. I live in Alhambra. As a matter of fact, driving by some of the street back here kind of bring back my, my younger days memory. And I recall I would fight the traffic for an hour and a half to go from Alhambra to Century City. Then when I get to Century City, park my car, go up to the building where I work in the 18th floor in the corporate building. And I walked in, I worked for a guy I didn't like, nor do I, re do I respect. But I was stuck there for seven long years. Every day at noontime, I would walk to the Century City Mall. How many been to Century City Mall? Quite nice. One hour, I walked back, and I had to walk back to my cubicle. I was an accountant for Northrop, and I worked in a corner cubicle. It was pretty nice. I got a pretty big size corporate cubicle. In the beginning, it was exciting. You know, you work for a you know, big Fortune 500 company. They pay for your college education, further your college education and whatnot. But after a while, I feel like, you know, it's beautiful lunchtime out there. But I feel like I, I was told to get back. Somehow it's like a, a robot and go back to my cubicle. And there were times I feel like I go back to my cubicle, you know, those fluorescent lights in the cubicle. How many of you work in a corporate office, a corporate environment? Do you do they still have those, those, those fluorescent lights in the ceiling? You know, there were one point in my life, you know what I felt like? I felt like those fluorescent lights were sucking the juice out of me. And day in, day out, eight hours later, I would fight the, get on the traffic, on the freeway, and fight hour and a half to go back to Alhambra. Eat dinner, get myself ready. Next morning, what do I do? Same drill. Hour and a half. Go work for boss I did not like. I was totally stressed out. I hated it. But it pays the bill. Eight hours, hour and a half home, dinner. Next morning, what do I do? Same thing. That thing called the treadmill of life. How many of you are on the treadmill of life? Show of hands. Look, I know, I know some of us are not willing to raise our hand no matter what. Why? Because we have this thing called, don't mess up my hairdo. <laughs> we have this thing called, I'm cool. I'm good. I have a good job. I have a good education. Well, you know what? Get over it. Guys, look, listen, listen. I'm going to, I'm going to really give it as real as it gets. I'm blessed to travel the world and have worked with thousands of people across the globe. There's no begging on anyone to come into this. But as a human being, as a fellow earthling on this planet, I want to open my heart to share with you. Now, I, you don't have to do Jeanette. But I hope that it inspires you to question yourself, where are you going? The things that we were taught, the paradigm that we were taught, the things that we were told to do, is it going to take you where you wanted to go? That's called being truthful with ourselves, being authentic with ourselves. Some of you say, you know, Kim, you, you are so outspoken. You know, you, 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 you could talk on stage. I would say, are you kidding me? I am an introvert. Those of you that know me personally, I grew up in a family of four girls. I'm the most quietest one. But thank goodness, 20 some more years ago, someone laid me off. I was forced to take off the tinted lens to look at my life, to where I was. And it was at that time that I was able to rekindle my dreams of where I wanted to go. And so today, look at our current circumstances. Are you on the treadmill of life? If you are, if you're happy, more power to you. But if there's a way, 
if there's a way that you can work hard for the next two to five years so you can have the rest of your life to do the things you wanted to do, would you do it? I don't know. Only you can answer that. Only we can deal with our own, that tinted lens works both ways. One is that we take up the lens and look at our current circumstances and of where we are in life and of where we wanted to go. And the other part of the tinted lens, we're moving it to seeing things for what it is. Many times we still look at this platform, this opportunity as an opportunity for the hopeless and hapless and less educated. But I'm telling you, today you're looking at professionals. There's a wave of professionalism happening. People are there's a new paradigm happening around the world. And so I hope that gesture of putting on that cool sunglasses is not to show off. But I want to do something disruptive so that, you know what, you, we, you remember it when something happened to us. You know what, I need to really be authentic, be truthful with ourselves and our circumstances. If I was to continue doing whatever I'm doing for the next three to five years, is anything going to change? Is my circumstances, my, 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 my income going to change? If not, we've got to make a change. The world is changing. The world is evolving. Recently, my son went to an archery game. And I want to share that with, with you because I think it's very... I, I, you know, oftentimes as I live live and, and I, you know... I really believe the last 20 years of entrepreneurship, I had really compacted my lives. That I was blessed to do so much in the last, just in the Jeunesse platform in six years. I was able to travel places in one month, probably more people than most people travel in a lifetime. And I was in the archery class, and, 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 as, and I, I got something out of it. Every day, now, every day I live life, I reflect on life. And in the archery game, there's a target, and you start to shoot the target, right? Now, after first shoot, usually you don't hit the target, do you? Second shoot, you don't hit the target. Third, ten, you don't hit the target. Now, what would have happened if, if my son says, you know what, Mom, that target is too hard. Let me move that target so that I can adjust. Let me move the target so I can adjust so that the arrow will hit the center. That's the game you hit. Instead of moving the target... We should hone our craft and, and practice to make it better so the arrow will hit the target. That's the way to win the game, right? Now, most of the time, and that to me is life. Most of the time, when we were young, when we we're out of college, we have this big dream and big goals. But we're not hitting the target. And as we're not hitting the target, the Samson talk about, we begin to shrink our dreams to match our income. Forget about the big fat Mercedes. A Hyundai will do. Forget about a trip to Europe. Local Las Vegas trip will do. Forget about a good, good finer schools. A local, you know, city college will do. That's called shrinking our dreams to match our income. When yet, all we have to do is to hone our craft, find the right method, and learn and hone our skills and keep learning, keep growing. That's a process. And so with that, I want to talk about what we do. This is, I, I, you know, Dr. Mark did a fabulous job talking about the opportunity. And Samson did an incredible job and all the sharing. But today I came here, I said, what can I do that, that can be of value, that I can be of help? That really the practical things for you to engage. How many would like to know? Show of hands. You don't, too, you don't too, seem, seem too excited except Dr. Mark, okay? How many of you really? If, look, look. There's no guaranteed income in any form, shape, or way. But if there's a way in five years or six years that you can change your life totally forever, how many want to learn how to do that? Thank you. A little better. I tell you, you know what? We, need, we were in Indonesia, right? Wow. You know what? The size of people group and the response and the, and the, 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 the response from the crowd is very different than Los Angeles. I don't know, maybe people in America is too comfortable. Winnie, how loud were they? Yes! Wow, 68, give a big round of applause. Now, my fellow Los Angelinos, can we do it? Yes! Wow, now that's more power. Now, we're going to record that and send it to our Indonesian friends, okay? All right, now, so guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it as, 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 
layman as I can and to share with you what we do. So before we do that, I hope you understand and comprehend that this is a business. And it's quite a legitimate business and it can be a quite a big business. If you're looking at this as a way to make a couple of grand a month, yes, it's available. If you're looking at this as a multi-million dollar business, yes, it's available. But be careful how you look at it because either way is true. If you look at a small, tiny, little, dinky business, it is a little, small, tiny, dinky business. If you look at this as a multi-million dollar business, it is a multi-billion dollar business. Now, so having said that, let me ask this. As entrepreneurs, what are some of the character, some of the things that we have to do? As entrepreneurs, do we have to invest time in the business? Mark, when you own your own, your own pharmacies, how many pharmacies do you own now? Did you have to put time in your business in the beginning? I bet you you were the janitor, you were the pharmacist, and you were everything in between, true or not true. So you have to invest time. This is an entrepreneur. You have to invest what? In anything. Time. In a business. Do you have to invest money? Absolutely. Do you have to invest time to learn how to run your business? You know, when I marry my husband, who's a medical doctor, good thing he's not here so I can talk about him. I remember I had to help him do his billing. I had to help him with his you know, medical practice and with billing and employees, which I wasn't too keen on going to the office every day. And so I had to learn how to run a medical practice. I had to learn how to do medical billing with a billing code, the CPT and all that stuff. Some of you that understand medical office, you know how complicated that can be this is for me. So in any business, we have to spend time to learn. Just like Mark. Mark now, from, as if all oh, his pharmacy is not enough, he now will open a first restaurant. Did you have to learn? I know there are times when I go there, I said, what is a pharmacist back in the kitchen making cafe sada? What is a pharmacist back there making fur? But he's really rolling his hands up in the trenches working the business. As an entrepreneur, do you have to be resourceful? Absolutely. When things don't go your way, in the beginning, Mark, in your restaurant, when this is not where it should be, when there's not enough customer, what do you do? Do you say, you know what? I do not have any customers today. I'm going to close shop and I'm going to serve him. You don't do that, right? What do you do? You came out there with a the fly, the catch of the fly. Even if you kill the fly and there's no fly in your restaurant, okay? But even if you have to, you're going to stay in stay put. Now, why is it that with the Jeunesse platform, that people are not willing to do that. It's gonna take time. It's gonna take a little bit of money to start your business. Not like not the traditional world, but it's gonna take a little business to start your business. And it's gonna take a lot of learning. How many of you went to college, show of hands? College, university. Wow, a lot of you. I went to college, I remember. Four years of college. Day in, day out. Morning class, afternoon class, I've taken many classes. And then I work a part-time job. During all those classes, four years of college, was I making any money doing the schooling? I wasn't. But relentlessly, every day I would go to school, I would go to class, why? To learn, and after